which was really sad, but really lovely that they could see each other. Well, that you could see all of us. And she was just putting her hands up to the glass. And he was putting his hand on the glass. It was so nice to obviously see him, because it had been a couple of weeks since I'd seen him at all. Um, but obviously really hard at the same time, because obviously all we wanted to do was like, give him a cuddle. So I met Tom in 2012 in Oceana. <laughs> Um, I think it was on my birthday. I tried not to fancy him for a while, but he was just so, just so funny and lovely that just happened. <laughs> I think from about 15, he had um, suffered with migraines that used to like make him sick, which got worse sort of like in his late teens um, to sort of about 20. Um, and then it was when he was sort of 20, 21, found out um, that he had a tumour the size of a lemon, I think it was, when they found it. So they reckoned it had been probably growing for years. It was a grade two um, tumour, which meant they couldn't um, get all of it out. So when I met him, I think it had all been about um, 18 months, two years since the surgery. Um, so I knew I knew about it all before I met him, but he didn't he didn't know. It took him about six months to to tell me, even though you know Tavistock's a small place. He got engaged in 2016, and he'd been alright then for a good few, like a, probably about a year, I think. Um, and then we got married in um, September 2017. I didn't know I was pregnant. Um, I found out the week before we got married, the Saturday before our wedding, that I was pregnant. Um, so that was our secret on the day, no one knew. I had Poppy in April 2018. After our two weeks off together, after having Poppy, he had a follow-up scan the day before he was going back to work. His tumour was growing again and slight um, facial weakness in one side. He stayed in um, hospital for about a week and that was all around the time that um, COVID started affecting everything. And he had a scan um, and then like in the early hours they said he's got a bleed on the brain um, and that normally they don't end well. His consultant said anything from up up to about three months um, without treatment from looking at his scans. So then the St Luke's um, team came. I wasn't aware that the St Luke's team were even in Derriford Hospital. There's a lovely girl called Becky. I spoke to her for probably about an hour, just about anything and everything. Um, and it was really, really nice to have somebody to speak to that was our age because like a lot of the things she said you know it's almost like she got it because she knew how she would feel she cried with me and like that meant a lot when we actually arrived at St Luke's Tom was actually able to sort of get what was going on because um, obviously we had to make all these decisions whilst he wasn't really aware um, and he spent a week um, actually in the hospice, um, which he said was like a retreat. <laughs> he got a lovely sea view room, fed all the time, alcohol trolley. Um, I got a message from St Luke's on Facebook saying, um, Tom was making us all laugh today. Apparently he keeps sneaking into the cleaner's office at night and pinching all the biscuits. In these difficult times, he's bringing a smile to us. And he said, the funny thing is we have our we have a box of donated biscuits he could have, but he just chooses to take the cleaners. So that made me laugh. <laughs> and all, his fr all our friends came to visit all the time, like the children came all the time. They had a playroom that Poppy would play dress up in. Um, his son Josh would come and visit and 
Tom was able to go down and play like the Xbox with him and um, yeah, family would just come and like have lunch in the cafe and Tom would come out and have lunch with them and like it was just a really, really not like really nice place to be. Um, and just even nicer that Tom loved it. And then I've got a phone call from Poppy's nursery. She was in nursery that day to say that she had a temperature and that I had to go and get her. Um, and basically that she couldn't come back to nursery for a couple of weeks and that we needed to both self-isolate. It didn't even dawn on me that self-isolating would, you know, mean I wouldn't be able to see Tom. So yeah, that, at that point I sort of had to sort of say goodbyes in a way because I didn't even know if I would, you know, get to see him again. Um, about two days before me and Poppy were about um, to come out of self-isolation and would be able to go in and see Tom again, um, lockdown was announced and we weren't allowed to visit at all. There was no visitors. So I think after about three weeks of not seeing Tom, I just wanted to see him. So I came, I came drove all the way, um, taking my chances and knocked the door and um, the lady at the door said she'd go and see if there was any way we could see Tom. I had Poppy with me. They kindly brought him um, to see me out through the, a massive window and obviously Poppy went running over. Which was really sad but really lovely that they could see each other or that he could see all of us. She was just putting her hands up to the glass and he was putting his hand on the glass and it was, it was horrible but just grateful that, you know, we even got that at that time. It was so nice to obviously see him because it had been a couple of weeks since I'd seen him at all. Um, but obviously really hard at the same time because obviously all we wanted to do was like, give him a cuddle. <laughs> so then about a week later, um, I got a call from St Luke's and um, it was decided then that Tom would come home um, with care from St Luke's. That was defi definitely, definitely the best decision. Like we had the most amazing three weeks at home together. You know, whether they were like getting him dressed or showering or whatever, it meant that I could have half an hour, you know, to, you know, do something with Poppy or just have like a little break. They would even ask if there was anything I wanted them to do, <laughs> like just in the house, which was lovely. On the final morning when they came, we actually had a really lovely day. The fact that he was at home, um, it was sunny. Um, <laughs> we probably did all the things you shouldn't do. We had drinks and food and just made it a really nice environment because Tom was never one to be down or in the dumps or he would he would have hated for people to be miserable and crying around his bed like that was his worst that was his worst nightmare so we made sure that we had like the most positive day we all knew the day was coming i think everybody left about um five six o'clock it was just me and him and it was about quarter past seven on the sunday evening and um I started saying all sorts of stuff he'd be cringing at <laughs> and um, like stuff he would say to the children and um, stuff, things that he'd say to Josh and Poppy at bedtime and um, just fell asleep. almost like he waited for everyone to go and then you know for me to have like 
those final words or whatever with him. And then he just went. He literally was amazing. He was the best person in the world. Like, not, not just me that thought it. Like, all my family, all his family, all his friends. Like, he was just the most funniest, loveliest, selfless, like, laid back person you could ever meet. No one ever had a bad word to say about him. He was a massive fan of Stormzy. I remember saying to the vicar on the phone when he asked me about the music, I said, oh, you might not have heard of him, Stormzy. And he was like, oh, I haven't had that one before. So yeah, we had him going into Stormzy, Blinded by Your Grace, which was lovely. He would have loved that. Through all of it, through all his illnesses, everything, all he ever said was, um, I'm just glad it's me, I'm just glad it's me. Because he just wouldn't have wanted to watch any of us go through it. And that just summed him up. As a husband and a dad, like, we literally couldn't have wanted anything more. Like, he couldn't have loved us anymore if he tried. And we couldn't have loved him anymore if we tried.